Hi. In this video, we're going to be talking about circuit analysis. When we analyze a circuit, we're predicting mathematically what voltages and currents we expect in the circuit. In this section, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's current law, which is often abbreviated as KCL. All lump parameter circuit analysis relies, basically, on only two circuit analysis rules. One is Kirchhoff's current law, the other is Kirchhoff's voltage law. There are a number of other facets to the analysis that we do need to include. We need to define our variables such that they obey the passive sign convention, and we need to represent the relationships between voltage and current for our circuit elements mathematically. But the final analysis always boils down to applying Kirchhoff's laws. So in this video, we'll get a big chunk of information relative to analyzing circuits. Like the passive sign convention, Kirchhoff's laws are relatively easy to apply as long as you pay attention to the details. A fair amount of a successful circuit analysis amounts to nothing more than bookkeeping. It's not difficult as long as you follow the basic rules rigorously. Kirchhoff's current law is very simple. The sum of all the currents entering a node or leaving a node is zero. Really, all this is telling us is the total charge at a node can't change. So another way of stating KCL is that the sum of the currents entering a node is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the node. So any charge going into a node has to be balanced by an equal amount of charge leaving the node. It's that easy. Now notice that in our statement of KCL, we use the term algebraic sum. That simply means that we have to account for the sign of the currents when we add them up. Luckily, the sign of the current is associated with the direction we assume for the current rather than the actual current direction. We'll talk more about that later, but first let's take a look at a quick example. We have a circuit node here with n currents leaving the node. The currents are I1 of t, I2 of t, I3 of t, on up to I sub n of t. By coincidence, all the currents are assumed to be leaving the node. So if we sum the currents leaving the node, we get I1 of t plus I2 of t plus all of our other currents up to I sub n of t. That is equal to zero. Now in our statement of KCL, we say that we can sum either the currents entering or leaving the node. For this example, let's sum the currents entering the node. Remember that switching the current direction corresponds to changing the sign of the current. Therefore, if I1 is leaving the node, it corresponds to negative I1 entering the node. So if we want to sum the currents leaving the node, we get the negative of I1 of t plus the negative of I2 of t plus a bunch of other things, plus the negative of I sub n of t. Those also sum to zero. Now, these two are not different equations. They're exactly the same equation. If you multiply this one by negative one, you recover this equation. As long as you keep track of your assumed directions and your signs, KCL will make sure that everything works out. Also notice that from our equations, at least one of these currents is going to have to be negative. This simply means that at least one of our currents will be leaving the node, which is consistent with our alternate statement of KCL. The currents entering the node have to be balanced by currents leaving the node. Now, before you apply KCL, you need to indicate what your assumed positive current directions are. These assumed directions are what you use to decide whether a current is entering or leaving a node. When you apply KCL, you also need to decide whether you want currents entering the node to be assumed positive or currents leaving the node to be positive. Either choice is OK, but once you choose a sign convention for a particular node, you need to stick with it. That doesn't mean that you need to keep the same sign convention for any other nodes in the circuit, but for any one node, you do need to be consistent. If you're consistent about how you define your current directions and how you treat the signs on the current, KCL will make sure that everything works out and the signs on your resulting currents will correctly identify the actual current direction. Don't waste your time trying to decide which directions the currents at a node actually are in when you define them. Just choose a reference direction and stick with it. Now let's do a couple of examples to show what we're talking about. Here's our first example. We have a node here with three currents. 
our reference current directions are such that I1 and I2 are entering the node and I3 is leaving the node. These reference directions don't necessarily have anything to do with the actual current directions. They're just going to define how we choose our signs. I can do either of two things. I can assume that positive currents enter the node or I can assume that positive currents leave the node. Let's first do it with positive currents entering. If positive currents are entering, then I1 of t and I2 of t are both positive. I3 of t is negative because it's actually leaving. Now, we could just as easily assume that positive currents are leaving. If I assume positive currents are leaving, a current entering is going to be negative. So I'll have negative I1 of t plus a negative I2 of t. And I3 of t is leaving, so it is positive. This equation is just the negative of this equation, so mathematically these two are identical. Pick whichever one you like. Here's our second example. We have a node with four currents. We're given the magnitude and direction of three of those currents. We're going to apply KCL to find the fourth current. Now we need to assume whether we want to treat positive currents as entering or leaving the node. I'll do this problem both ways just to make sure we know what's going on. So first, I'll say positive is leaving. If positive currents are leaving, 4 amps is entering. It's a negative 4 amps. We have a current leaving here, which is going to be a positive contribution, but it has a negative magnitude. So plus negative 1 amps. This guy is leaving. He's positive. So plus 2 amps. And I is leaving, which is plus I. Those have to sum to 0. Now we just have to solve this equation for i. Minus 4 plus minus 1 is minus 5, plus 2 is minus 3. If I take the minus 3 over to that side, i is equal to 3 amps. So the indicated direction for i is correct. It's 3 amps leaving that terminal. If we assume that positive is entering, on the other hand, now 4 amps is a positive contribution. This is leaving, so it's a negative contribution, but it's negative minus 1 amp, which is going to add 1 amp to my total. 2 amps is leaving, so that's a minus 2 amps. I is leaving, so that's negative I. That sums to 0. Now we have 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3. If I take I to the other side, I is still 3 amps. We get the same result regardless of which assumption we make. 